Sam Bavariar, who had been sitting motionless for so long, now sprang up and took hold of Gondamaran's hand. What the hell did you dare to do? said. Father. What is wrong with killing this friendly traitor? said Kanamaran. What's wrong? So, you and I and this ancient Sam Bavarier clan will perish. If we kill him, they will blame us for killing the prince and him as well? Don't you know this? said the father. Who has the power to lay such blame on us? Will he live after laying such blame? Kan Thamaran asked. Alas! You prodigal child! Do you have to show your valor and bravery in this? It is only because we heard your idea from the beginning that this disaster happened in our house. You invited the great Palyavatarayar and other minor kings to this house. It was because of you that Madhuranthak Deva came here secretly. It was known to everyone through this wonderful friend of yours. Then you are the one who brought Aditha Kari Kalar from Kanchi. Alas! I never thought it would turn out like this. Malay Aman, the oldest enemy of our clan, is approaching with a large force. What am I going to tell him? Palyavetare has now seen and gone to town. Saying that, Sam Bavariyar hit him on the head again. Kandamaran's eyes filled with tears, Father! You should not suffer in vain. I myself am being punished for the mishap that I have done. I am waiting to do whatever you order. He said. First, take this girl and leave her in that house. If she says something, put a cloth over her mouth and tie her hands and legs and come. If not, put her in a secret room and lock her. Said Sam Bavariyar. Manamekali trembled after seeing the Rajrakaram her dear father was wearing. She also knew that Vandiyathevan was in no immediate danger. Father! Forgive me, I will do according to their orders. Don't let Kanamaran touch me. I will go to the temple where the mothers are. After saying that, she walked away from there. Gandamaran also followed her. As soon as they were gone, Sam Bavariyar looked at the men who had come with him and said, Put this man by the foot of the cot, and fasten him. He ordered that. As the people approached Vandiyathevan, he remained silent. Even when he tied the bed to the leg, he did not interfere. As soon as the knot was finished, he said, Sir! Think for a moment. I am Karakalar's intimate friend. What will it profit me to kill him? Indeed, the murderers who killed him have escaped through the tunnel. Go on and try to catch them. I have seen them. If you untie me, I will be with them. I will come and help capture them. I will not attempt to escape. He said. Hey! If what you're saying is true, what were you doing when Kari Kaler was being murdered? Were you having fun? Said Sam Bavariyar. Sir? While the Queen of Palvur and Kari Kaler were talking, suddenly, the murderers entered. As I tried to stop them, a terrible-looking Kalamukin grabbed my neck and scolded me. I lost consciousness. When I came to, I saw Aditya Kari Kaler lying dead. Vandiyathevan said. At this moment, a loud shout was heard from beyond the palace wall. It sounded like a chant from the angry voices of thousands. Sam Bavariyar listened to it. Looking at Vandiyathevan, he said, OK. OK. Even if what you say is true, stay here for a while. Be a companion to your dear friend the prince. I'll see what the fuss is about. I'll come and get to know your party completely. Saying that, Sam Bavariyar left. People left with him. As they were going, they closed the door of the room and left it outside as per the order of Sam Bavariyar. Darkness enveloped the room again. Vandiyadeva's heart was filled with unspeakable pain. He thought back to everything that had happened since he had arrived at that Kadampur Sam Bavariyar mansion a few months ago. He remembered the Tumakatu he had seen in the sky and the people talking about it. Seeing a comet in the sky, everyone thought that Sundara Chola's last day was near. As Sundara Chola had been ill for a long time, it was natural that people expected that. That's why people talked about who could come next to him. 
In this palace the princes gathered and talked about it. But what everyone expected turned out to be the same. Aditha Kari Kalar, a teenage hero and hero, passed away. Here lies his lifeless body in this room. Sundara Chola, who is sick, is still alive. But will it last much longer? Will he be alive after hearing the news of his beloved son's untimely death? Alas! How anxious was the father to see his son! Did Kari Kalar build a golden palace in Kanchi for his father to come and stay? Did the sons go away without offering to welcome and entertain their father in that golden mansion? It is not known what else will result from this. The entire Chola Empire was engulfed in a flood of misery. Is that all? Who knows what kind of upheavals will result? There is sure to be a big fight between the petty kings. The sound heard outside a while ago must be the sound made by the soldiers of Malay Amman. Why did they chant like that? Are they going to attack this Kadampur mansion, what? Why perhaps the news of Karakalar's death had reached them? Aha! Uh -huh. How is Sam Bavarier going to deal with this? He will try to deal with the crime of killing Kari Kalar on us. But will Malay Amman believe it? Believably, because this happened in Sam Bavarier's mansion, would he leave him alone? Malay Amman must have known about the conspiracy that took place here earlier. Although he did not know, he has gone to al Warkadian and warned. That is why he is gathering forces. Vandiyathevan knew very well how much Malay Amman loved his grandson. Who knows what he will do when he hears this news? Sam Bavariyar will ruin the family and even destroy this mansion completely. Pity. Kanamaran. Good child. How kind was he to us? Hasn't so much hatred turned into deadly hatred? All because of that Pavur Mahini. In hindsight, her story is also tragic. How can you blame her? Everything is the cruelty of fate. 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 What is the law of Bell Tower? Why should she love me so much? She volunteered to save me and confessed that I killed? What is the equivalent of such love? What am I going to do in return for this? Vandiyathevan smiled to himself. What madness to think of bartering! What is the point of me feeling sorry for others? No one else is in a more dire straits situation than mine. They are going to accuse me of killing Aditha Kari Kalar. There is no evidence to prove that I did not do that harm. Nandini and Ravi Dasan's group left. No one tried to follow them. Even if they were caught, how could I prove that I was not conspiring with them? Cannot. What kind of punishment will be given to the traitor who killed the crown prince? They will not simply punish murder for murder. They will inflict terrible torture so that no one would ever dream of doing such a thing again. Whatever punishment is given, let it be given. Will not the old Ilaya Prati and Pani's riches think that I have killed Kari Kalar? What torture could be worse than that? God! In the past three to four months, I have escaped all these hurdles only to be subjected to this terrible disgrace? All these thoughts were appearing and disappearing in Vandiyadeva's mind like wave after wave. He didn't know how long it had been like this. His train of thought was interrupted when a thin film suddenly spread across the darkened room. What smoke is that? Where does it come from? He started thinking that. For a while there was a very faint light. Aditha Karakalar's body was visible in that light. The doors remained open. Therefore the lamp cannot be bright. Then, what light? He observed the four sides closely. Smoke and light what is the cause of the smoke coming from the hunting hall next door? Maybe a fire? Those who tunnel through the hunting hall, did they leave the fire on purpose? Or the lamp brought by him and Manamegala when they entered the hunting hall was the cause of this accident? More and more smoke came. The heat was increasing. In no time the flames of the fire began to show through the gaps in the wood-paneled walls between the hunting hall and the room. A moment later, the Lord of Fire entered this room with his torch-lit arms outstretched. The god who came for a while was watching the fire god's entry with wide-eyed interest. At first he felt a sense of excitement. Lord Agni is going to take care of all our worries. 
the burning fire is going to happen in the same place for Aditha Kari Kalar and us. He thought that. But this was short-lived and he did not want to leave this world accused of killing Kari Kalar. That's what Sam Bouvery and his son would say outside. Some would even believe it. Whether one believes it or not, Pani's wealth and Kundave Devi should not believe so. I have to prove to them that I did not commit that heinous crime. Not only that, can we let the funeral rites of Hero Karakalar's Thirumana take place like this? Shouldn't his parents and close relatives at least see his lifeless body? Yes, yes. Even if his life cannot be saved, at least his body must be saved. A way must be found to perform the funeral rites with due respects to the emperor's son. Until then Van Diathevan made no effort to free himself. He didn't even notice how he was tied. Now noticed. First they tied both his front hands together and with that rope tied his entire body to the leg of the bed. Could not bend or stand up. With all his strength he tried to pull at the handcuffs, biting with his teeth to untie them, could not in the same way, he tried to untie the bandages of his body, that also failed. But the bed shook as he squirmed, and an idea immediately struck him. Dragging the cot, he headed towards the secret door of the hunting hall. It's not that easy. I had to move inch by inch. Every time he pulled the bed, the bandages on his body tightened and caused pain. Yet he persevered. As he approached the door, flames were coming through the possible door jams. He grasped the rope that tied his hand to those flames, the rope caught fire. At the same time, flames of fire were also thrown on his hands causing excruciating pain. However, he persevered and as soon as the fire caught fire and cut his handcuffs, he hurriedly untied his body. The curtains of the bed caught fire before they could be undone. The room was filled with smoke. Vandiyadeva's whole body felt like burning. His eyes showed irritation at first. Then burst into tears. Eyesight began to fade. He grasped the rope that tied his hand to those flames, the rope caught fire. At the same time, flames of fire were also thrown on his hands causing excruciating pain. However, he persevered and as soon as the fire caught fire and cut his handcuffs, he hurriedly untied his body. The curtains of the bed caught fire before they could be undone. The room was filled with smoke. Vandiyadeva's whole body felt like burning. His eyes showed irritation at first. Then burst into tears. Eyesight began to fade. He grasped the rope that tied his hand to those flames, the rope caught fire. At the same time, flames of fire were also thrown on his hands causing excruciating pain. However, he persevered and as soon as the fire caught fire and cut his handcuffs, he hurriedly untied his body. The curtains of the bed caught fire before they could be undone. The room was filled with smoke. Vandiyadeva's whole body felt like burning. His eyes showed irritation at first. Then burst into tears. Eyesight began to fade. As soon as he caught fire and cut his handcuffs, he hurriedly untied his body. The curtains of the bed caught fire before they could be undone. The room was filled with smoke. Vandiyadeva's whole body felt like burning. His eyes showed irritation at first. Then burst into tears. Eyesight began to fade. As soon as he caught fire and cut his handcuffs, he hurriedly untied his body. The curtains of the bed caught fire before they could be undone. The room was filled with smoke. Vandiyadeva's whole body felt like burning. His eyes showed irritation at first. Then burst into tears. Eyesight began to fade. What would I have to burn here with the prince? In a way this is good. The prince could not be saved, at least I get to die with him. What is this idea? I don't care about dying. If the prince's body burns to ashes here, won't it be an immortal curse for me? Do those who know me curse me whenever they remember me? Why should I die yielding to such blame? I will take the prince's body out anyway. I will entrust his patent Malay Amon. I promise that I did not kill the prince and that I will find those who killed him. There is no harm if I die after doing the thing so agreed. 
until then somehow you have to keep this life alive. Van Diathevan now untied all the fetters and became free. But what is this? The bed is on fire. Can't stand the heat? Can't open your eyes? Even if it is opened, nothing can be seen because of the smoke. However, the body of the prince must be found. Van Diathevan was sitting on the ground and frantically stretched out his hand and hurriedly moved around and searched. Search time will be few minutes. But it seemed to him like ages. At last the prince's body fell upon his hands. He picked up the body and put it on his shoulder. That's when the idea of how to go out came. Going into the hunting hall is impossible. Aha! Uh -huh. All the animals that the Sambuvaris had collected there for so many years would have been burnt to ashes. From that room he reached the main door through which everyone normally went out. He smashed the door with one hand, kicked it with his foot and hit the door with his body. Fire! Fire! Open the door! He shouted. Nothing works. See you. What ignorance. You have to go up through the Jaffa warehouse. Alas! Shouldn't it catch fire by then? Have you wasted so much time? He shouted. Nothing works. See you. What ignorance. You have to go up through the Jaffa warehouse. Alas! Shouldn't it catch fire by then? Have you wasted so much time? He shouted. Nothing works. See you. What ignorance. You have to go up through the Jaffa warehouse. Alas! Shouldn't it catch fire by then? Have you wasted so much time? Now the room was well lit. But the smoke was lying there so that the brightness was useless. I could not open my eyes. Even if you look with difficulty, you can't see the direction. Vandiyadeva ran, purposefully aiming at the place where the Yalakalankiya was. Something knocked on the leg on the way. It's Dana. It made a sound. Ah! It must have been the screw-bladed knife lying by the side when I remembered it. There is something mysterious about that knife. Take it. If someone gets in the way, maybe that knife will be used. Thinking like this, he bent down and picked up the knife. Then a flame from the burning log fell on his shoulder. He knocked it and threw it away and ran away and reached Yathkalan J.M. One of his hands was holding tightly to the charcoal that had been resting on his shoulder all this time. But it was impossible to climb the steps of the barn while carrying it on the shoulder, the door above was another possibility. So he left Karakalar's tent below and climbed up and opened the upper door. He bent down and picked up half the barn. God! By then, the fire has reached a cleningium. If it had been delayed a few more minutes, this route would have been gone too. Van Diathevan threw Karakalar's body on the top of the platform and climbed up and joined Badapurna. A cool breeze now blew over him who had been basking in fire and smoke for so long. He thought of lying there for a while and resting. Don't, don't. Don't delay even a minute. Who saw when the burning building would collapse? Again he took Karakalar's body and put it on his shoulder and rushed through Melmaku. He passed through the attics as he had done before. But as he had gone alone earlier, it was possible for him to get down from the mansion and cross the moon courtyard and jump over the wall. Is it possible now? He was very tired and had to carry Aditha Karakalar's body too. Then his attention was drawn to the great clamor that arose from all four sides outside the palace. Aha! What is this? It seems that the warriors of Malay Amman have started to attack the fort. It looks like they are smashing the front door. Many players are jumping on the wall. Did Malay Amman order to attack the Kadampur palace after hearing the news that the prince had been killed? So what will those warriors do if they see me carrying Karakalar's body? Why? They'll think I killed him. Will they tear me apart? So I have to be very careful. Must be invisible to anyone. Find out the location of Malay Amman and hand over his grandson's Thirumana to him and then let what happens happen. Then Vandiyadeva crept very cautiously into the recesses of the attics and their shadowy dark places. At last, when he had first come there, 
he stood at the place where he observed the conspiracies of the princes below, and arrived at that place. As he looked around wondering how to get down, he saw a ladder placed on the edge of the wall. Not only that, a human figure was also seen on the side of the ladder. Who would it be? Who is he waiting for with the ladder? What would happen if he just went down that ladder? Whatever happens is okay. Use that ladder to finish. Fortunately, there is a knife in hand. Whatever happens can be taken care of. At this point there was a lot of commotion near the front door. To find out what it was, or something, the man standing by the ladder went a little further. Thinking that it had gone very well, Van the van rushed down the ladder. It was right for him to get down and put his foot on the ground, and for the departed man to return. Sammy! You've made it so long! When the man asked that, Van the van came to know that he was I Tump and Carey. At the same moment a Dump and Carey guessed who he was waiting for. When I Tump and Carey came near him, he said in surprise, Ah! You? Who are you carrying on your shoulders? He asked. Yes, father. It is I. Disciple of the bull-faced preacher. He sent me ahead with the sacrifice of Ranabhatrakali. He is coming behind. He told you to stay here with the ladder. Look here. He told you to mark this knife. Van Dye the van said and showed the screw knife. I Tump and Carey was a little suspicious, you didn't tell me for so long? Let us go. The preacher has been doing this for so long. How are we going to get out of here? Thirukovalar's soldiers have started to surround the mansion and come in. He said. So what? It's easy for us to get away if the crowd gets too big. Shall we tell the great preacher all that? He'll find a way somehow. You stay here and wait for him. Tell him I'm in Nandavana. Vandaya the van said. Without waiting for Itumbang Kari's reply, he walked up to let go. After disappearing from Itumbang Kari's view, he walked towards the front gate tower of the mansion.